Hi there, so this is uh, the day four video. Um, I recorded this on the fourth day of the advent of code, but I finished it uh, just on the seventh um, and actually solved the problem on the fifth. Uh, it took me quite a while to get into part two of the problem or part B. And uh, in the end, I had to completely walk away. Now I've kept the full recording here, but it's kind of close to uh, 40, 45 minutes. Um, which is quite a, uh, a stonking amount of time to kind of sit and watch. And if you're interested in just on how I got over the bump of being completely stuck, uh, that's at the 40 minute mark, I'll try and include a link to jump to that directly. Um, otherwise, thanks for tuning in and I hope you enjoy this video. Okay, so we're looking at day four of the advent of code. Um, again, this uh, these videos being uploaded to YouTube, it's not to uh, solve it for you or anything like that. It's really, my hope is that uh, you're able to learn a bit of JavaScript through these videos, uh, either the actual code itself or maybe an approach to uh, development or maybe, I don't know, you're bored over lunch and you want to listen to my smooth British tones. Anyway, um, we are on day four um, and I'm gonna so solve this with JavaScript. Um, and um, I, I've considered whether or not I read this out loud to you, but I don't think it's worthwhile. Uh, actually, something I did discover just yesterday is that the answers that end up in um, in here, even if you see my answer, it turns out that everyone's uh, input, uh, puzzle input is actually different. So your answers would be different too. Uh, so you can't just kind of copy and paste the, uh, the answers, which I think is very clever. Um, so anyway, what we've got is these uh, passports um, and we have to validate them and we need to uh, test how many are valid. Um, and the fields are uh, these these keys and um, the spec, as it were, it says that the country ID is optional. So um, if the country ID is missing, then a passport is still valid, although it's a, uh, a North Pole credential. Um, so the question is how many uh, passports are valid in the batch file? And I've downloaded that already, but it looks like this. So there's a couple of things to uh, look at here. Firstly, the thing that pops out at me is that um, the passport itself uh, or the data for it may appear on one or more lines. And it's actually the blank line that separates them. In fact, it says right there, right? So we're gonna have to use, I'm gonna have to use that as the separate, the record separator. Um, and then once I've separated the records, go through each one and separate them again by uh, field, which is a space, and then uh, get the key value pairs um, by colon, um, and then check if that they if they have all of the prerequisite uh, fields. So there's a few ways we can do this. Um, uh, I am going to see where my fingers take me. So. Um, I need to create the new file. So we're going to do uh, one, not one, sorry, four a.js. Um, I'm going to steal the read file code. Um, and we're going to split it by lines. That's fine. Um, I'm actually going to hide my file to the second and I'm going to open a terminal to. Actually, no, I'm going to do this Quokka. That's why. Sometimes I use Nobon to kind of watch the output, but actually, Quokka is what I've been using for all these tutorial these uh, examples. So um, the file that we do want to do um, const records equals uh, mm, file dot reduce app cur and we're going to have an array and we are going to do so cur equals cur dot trim so make sure that the line is completely like devoid of spaces so if there's any spaces here just in case it doesn't look like there are but if there's any spaces here we want to make sure that we treat it as an empty line so if um not cur so i.e has a length of zero then next record okay so we're going to do um what are we going to do what are we going to do i guess we have to seal off the previous record somehow I mean, actually, I could do this. What do we have there? 
Uh, actually, I'm going to put the demo input in. So for input, I drop. Oh, sod. I'm going to drop that in and use that as my code. Let's have a look at what this file is actually. Mm, one. That's not right. Silly sod. Sorry, wasting your time. Okay, yeah. So actually, I'm going to split by multiple blank lines. Um, I think that my may, for my own sake. Um, I'm going to do this. Nope, I'm going to do uh, this. Right, so that means two or more blank lines. So that means if we got a space there, it still works. And that's just me being a bit wary. Okay, that looks all right. Um, and that also, yeah, that works. Okay, so we've now got each record. Okay, oh, nice little save there. And um, I mean, we might as well just chain off that. So uh, map record, let's have a look what we want. We've got, um, let's pop one of these things in here, just so we know what it looks like. Um, so record, we want to strip out the new line. So we're going to do um, record equals record dot replace. Um, just quite simply the new lines with a uh, space. Look right. Yeah. And then we're going to do um, const. I don't know. Fields equals record dot split by space and then dot map and we'll have a uh, what's this a uh, field field dot split by colon return fields so what do we got here That's not quite what we want. Quite what we want. I mean, it, it, it's not terrible. I mean, we could just kind of loop through. In fact, we don't need the values, do we? Unless they're over blank, which I don't think they are. Um, we should trim this just in case. Um, oh, 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 mistake there. So why is that happening? Oh, that's why, because our replace is only doing one at a time, so we should do, there you go. Okay, so um, we're breaking up pr correctly. Um, I guess, I mean, I don't know if there's going to be, if these are going to be unique or repeated. I've got no idea if the data is bad. I think that it's just whether or not there's any records missing. Um, I mean, kind of a cheeky way of doing that would be to work out the length. No, that wouldn't work because if there's how many how many fields do we have? We got this is the number of fields. I'm kind of getting a bit lazy on this. I'm actually let's make this an array. Const. Uh, I don't know. Labels, fields, records, what are these? Fields, fields, equals. Um, so, multicaster to the rescue, put those in quotes, stick a comma after it, and slap that onto there. And just because I'm being super lazy, I'm going to do, um, uh, I think it's like dollar dot length. Yeah, eight. Okay, so we, we're expecting eight. Um, all right, so we can just say if uh, fields.length equals eight, then it's all good. True. Uh, if fields.length is equal to seven, then we need to check, check which is missing. 
Um, in fact, actually, we need to just, yeah, this will be make sure the only CID is missing and then uh, return false. So it changes from a map to a filter because we only need the number. Um, and, uh, oh no, you can't do that, just true, there you go. Um, so we've got one at the moment and we're expecting in the test data set, we're expecting, how many are we expecting? Uh, two records. So we've got, what do we got? We've got, how many coming back? Um, length. One coming back because the two of them are set, uh, have a length of seven, right? So um, if there's seven, the only record that should be missing is the um, is the CID. So let's um, split those out and give back just the, the the field itself. If we look in here, we can see that we've got all the field labels. So if we do um, return fields dot includes uh, CID and we do not so return true if fields does not include CID okay yeah okay that's it so right let's test that with all the uh, with the full input And oh, we should probably log that out just for completeness. Console log uh, records dot length or oh, valid dot length valid. So we got two four two. So I've got a sneaky suspicion that this. I mean, we're seeing kind of a pattern in in the work that I'm doing a little bit. We're reading the file, splitting it, doing a filter, getting the number back. Um, Yay! Oh, look at that. Um, and I will kind of explain. I mean, there are different ways of doing this as well. You could arguably, um, not arguably, but you could also do something like um, a regex. I've used regexes to kind of um, pick out the records um, and count them as we go along. Uh, but, you know, this, this works just as well. So let's have a look at part two and um, solve that in real time. So I'm just going to read through this um, and with the magic of. Uh, editing, I'm just going to read it and come back. Okay, so um, this really boils down to each field as its own custom validation rule. So, um, you know, birth year uh, has to be four digits between uh, 1920 and uh, 2002. Um, and things like, uh, I'm guessing white space is trimmed. Um, yeah, so basically each one has its own rule. So uh, the version of code I've got here is not easily ported. Like we can't just kind of reuse this. We're gonna to have to go through every one of the fields and uh, validate it. So I'm still gonna duplicate it as uh, 4B. I'm gonna stop Quokka and start on this file. And um, what I will do is I'm going to use I think I'm going to start off with the rules and um, part of me in the back of my head, I'm thinking about how I do this in JQ and I'm not sure at the moment, but let's focus on JavaScript. Um, so instead of these fields being an array, I'm going to change this to be an object and I'm actually going to put the validation rule directly in. Um, so let's have a look. So birth year is going to be a uh, value and then we're just going to return uh, how do I how would I do this I'll do it like that like that yeah like that um, and then I'm going to do um, const no mm. I'm going to start off to make sure there's no letters in it so four digits uh, so just a I mean like, mm, do I want to do a regex I mean Uh, value equals value dot trim dot and if length uh, value dot length is not equal to four then return false 
Um, and the idea being is I'm going to call, that's not a valid object at all. Um, I'm going to call each one of these fields and pass the value straight in. Um, and it will say true or false, and then we expect to get, um, yeah, like eight replies, basically eight uh, value, uh, uh, eight results, a, a total of eight valid fields. So, um, you know, uh, let's turn some number const uh, year equals pass int value 10. Uh, always pass in your POSIX, not your POSIX, your RADIX uh, or RADIX. I don't know. Um, if year is less than 1920, return false. If year is greater than 2002, uh, then return false, then return true. There you go. So that should be the first one. Um, I'm just going to get this working as. Uh, I'm just going to do no op const no op equals. I'm just going to get the first one kind of working and tested. All right, so that's looking a bit better. Uh, field validators. And uh, we actually need to get both back out here. Um, so if fields is less than if fields dot uh, fields dot length is less than seven, then we know it's bad, right? Just kind of an early exit. No point in having it. Um, then what am I going to do? I'm going to do, I'm just going to just do this field validator dot BRB. Um, and we're going to stick in a uh, valid number. All right. Invalid. Invalid. Uh, yeah, that's okay. So that's kind of how it's going to work. And um, I guess what we'll have is uh, we'll have a const valid equals um, field dot filter, um, and then it will be. I guess if we have a look at what's inside of here. Yeah, it's an array. So if we capture the arrays and destructuring, we've got a uh, key and value, and then we can do um, return field validator key value. And that should give us a number. So we should end up with um, if valid equals eight, then return true, and then just return true or false. So that's how that's going to work, right? So Let's go through each one of these validators. Um, birth year is fine. Then we're going to do um, uh, at least at most, it's pretty much the exact same. I mean, we could probably do a generator for this. Might as well do, I mean, generator like a template function. Uh, let's see, is anyone? Yeah, in fact, those three uh, const. I don't know why I'm using const for the function names, but um, num validator um, equals min max, and then that will return one of these. Oops, return value. Oops, min. Max. What's this complaining about? Const. Oh, that's wrong. There you go. Uh, oh, we've lost Quokka. Uh, where did Quokka go? There it is. Okay. Um, so we've got a num validator that we can just kind of re. We can use like this. Um, and then it's uh, what is it? Nineteen. 20 and 2002 and then this one is a uh, number validator from num validator 
2010 to 2020. Um, and this one was at least 2020 at most 2030. Okay, so that's already starting to be used. Um, oh, no, that's wrong, isn't it? It's length. Silly sort. So we can get an idea of what, what's coming back here. Valid. Some numbers. Um, so let's move on to the next one. What we've got? Height. Uh, is there any other common one? It's pretty worth a nine digit number, including leading zero. So PID, that's pretty, pretty straightforward. Uh, value. Um, return. What's it? Not to nine. Do we need to do that? No, square brackets, and then nine. Dot test value. So might stick that in regex 101 just to be sure. So I've got a regex that says um, any digit uh, nine times. So let's just grab one of these pids, and then I said square bracket naught to nine, and then nine times. So that matches, that's not right, is it? Mm. So uh, a nine digit number. Return value.length is equal to nine and uh, from the start. Actually, I could have just done that, couldn't I? Yeah. Start to the end. Okay. So this is too many digits. Ah, there we go. Yeah, I don't need that. So that's cool. Um, that can be missing or not. So that will just be um, turn true. Uh, and then we've got exactly one. Oh gosh, it has to be one of these values here. So eye color value um, there you go dot includes value dot trim just to be sure return actually that said the value will be trimmed as it goes in so we don't need to worry about that do we trim the value we should do it there dot trim um, so that's eye color. Hair color is a hash, basically a six digit hexadecimal value. So hair color is value. And in, again, in this case, I'll, I'll kind of lean on uh, a regex. So um, kind of looks a bit like this um, starts with a hash and then has uh, a to f and then it's six exactly six characters so let's grab one of those just to be sure and let's stick that regex in so that was good um, let's put a, an E, no, not an E, uh, E, F, G, G. Yep, no good. Uh, one, zero, uh, G. Yeah, cool, that works. Um, and then we've got height. So height's a little bit more complicated. A number followed by either centimeters or inches. So um, we're going to do, uh, we're gonna have a conditional, I guess. Value, uh, if value.ends, with centimeters, if value dot ends with was it inches? Yeah, inches uh, return false. So we're going to default our uh, our default is to return false, like if it doesn't have any of those endings. Um, and the number must be at least. Uh, oh gosh. Okay, so. We could use the num validator again and just kind of pre-bake a couple. 
const cm equals non validator um, 150 193. Oh no, this requires it to be four digits, doesn't it? Do that. Okay. Stop it. Doesn't matter. I mean, I could have had that as an extra argument, but it's not a big deal. Um, so we can probably do a little bit of work, common work here ahead of time. So uh, number equals value dot slice uh, minus two. So that gives us, nope. Gives us the last two characters, we don't want that. Yeah. So these are everything excluding the last two characters. And then we can do parse int. Oh, 10. And sometimes this can be not a number, and that's fine. Other times it will be. And then we're going to do um, number is. So if number is less than, no, if number is, so we want a truth for one here. So if number, let's get rid of this crap, is um, greater than or equal to 150, and number is less than or equal to 193, then return true. And then this one is, 59 and 76. Okay, where are we spitting out that debug? Um, there, we don't want that anymore. So that's based on the entire uh, data set. I don't want to test the entire data set. I want to, here's some valid password ports. So this should give me four. Right. Give me two. Here are some valid passports. Sod, all of those should have been valid. Okay, right. So, this point. Seven seven. I don't know what that means. Uh, what we need to look at is the record. So the record for this one is failing. So let's just um, let's take this all out into its own function so we can unit test it. Um, test uh, validate record. Why am I doing a function? I don't know. Const validate record 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 is not defined. No, code is not defined. That's a problem. Okay, so that means that I can comment this out, and I can do validate record, and then pass in that string. And we can see what is going on. So, there's less than seven fields. How? What? No. Okay. So, let's find out which ones are invalid. True, 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 true. Huh, what is the valid number? Seven. Oh, you know what, if it's missing, ah, no. Oh, it's because we're filtering the fields instead of going through each one of the, um, the keys. So the, the CID, I bet, I bet, is missing, it is. Um, so we never, never query it, but arguably, no, not arguably. I was going to say, if, if the CRD is missing, then that will be fine at seven, but it's not fine. Actually, what we need to do is loop through all of these records. Um, so I'm just going to do a const uh, validation, uh, validation fields equals object dot keys. Uh, 
validation. What did I call it? Fill validators. Oh man, that's no, that's terrible. Uh, let's just call that keys. That'll do. Um, so in here we're going to do keys dot filter. Um, oh man. Hmm. Oh no, we don't have to do that. We can just do four. Just a eight value loop. I equals less than or greater than eight. Yeah, let's just do that. Um, let valid equals naught. Valid uh, if this. Oh. Then uh, valid plus plus. This is going out the door. Um, this will be fields. Well, we need to do key value, and that will blow up at some point. Where? Why is it right? God, there you go. So it can't destructure the field. So we're going to do or. And we're going to do if key. No. No, that's still wrong. Uh, let me think. Um, even though there's no. Right, the key is going. The value comes from that. No, this is completely wrong. We have to be able to look up. We have to be able to loop through each one of the uh, these keys and then ask the record for that piece of data. So we need to say um, valid equals keys dot filter key, and then we have to uh, return this value. Sorry, I'm kind of going around in circles a little bit. Um, return filter validate. And the problem here now is that we don't have the value. So the value needs to be from this record, and this needs to be a an object. Ugh. Reduce ack curve. So I'm going to use a a reduce function to turn it into an object. Um, and what we'll do is uh, cur is actually key value, and then uh, ack key equals value, and we can do the trim here. Return ack. Now that doesn't make any sense. I'll short circuit. Keys equals. Uh, so we've got some JavaScript error going on. Um, and a value is fields key. Don't need to trim. And I've managed to write myself into the same spot. Oh my lord. So, key, let's have a look at what that is. So we get, is that set to two, four, six, eight? And CID should return true. So let's capture the result, const res equals that, return res, let's find out which ones. So key res. You see here I'm using quokka again like in a, as an array. That should give us eight. How is, what is valid? <sighs> again. Right, okay, fine, looks good. Okay, let's retry that. Let's get rid of all this and this. And we have four valid records. Okay, that's good. And then from the example code, we should have to try the invalid passports. Cool, zero. So let's drop in the actual input. And we get cannot read trim of undefined. 
which is trim of undefined. Which one is complaining about that? What? Oh, there. So one of the number validators is getting nothing being passed in. I'm just going to stick in a try catch so I can actually see what the value is there. Catch e throw e and then value. Obviously value is undefined. Oh my lord. Oh, it's the i y i y year, whatever that is. Which one has given me what? Why is that not finding any results? What is up with that? Um, okay. Where are we? This one. So value is coming into IYR. That is no good. So we're just going to do, uh, I want to look at this. So if key is equal to I year, then um, I might look at the whole of fields. Maybe just that one actually. So, so you've got the, what is it, the fourth one? One, two, three, four. Okay, that's fine. So it's missing the year. Of course, if the whole thing is missing, it, oh God, it should just be false, right? So yeah, that's fine. That's absolutely fine. That's uh, totally valid. So we don't, we say if, if not value, return false. And because we're reusing this, we didn't have to do it a bunch of times. Oh man, this is blowing up now. Same problem. If, in fact, Let's do that in the record validator because we're just going to have to keep adding it. Um, if, right, so the const value equals fields key, if not value return false, otherwise return this. Okay, so we've got number 87. That's definitely the input, it's looking good. A lot more code. Quite a bit of code for day four. 87. Ah! Not the right answer. Seems to be happening every time now, doesn't it? Okay, so I'm going to pause the, uh, the recording and then just have a dig around and see if I can find where it is. Um, this will be mostly me just kind of thinking. Okay, just worked out what the problem is. It's uh, this this uh, slash slash dash fix is wrong uh, because it doesn't allow for the key uh, to be CID. So um, and key is not equal to CID. Uh, so I was just testing this record that looked like it was valid, but it was only missing a CID. This this thing that was like if there's no record, then chuck it back. The optional record. The only optional record was CID, so um, that's kind of a little piece of hack code. I'm not super chuffed with it, um, and it's the kind of thing that I would refactor if this was to go to kind of production or something. Um, so I'm logging out all the invalid ones now. So just look at like just one of these. Um, so the birth year is 1971, which is good. The E year is 1930, uh, 2039, which is uh, outside the limit. That's correct. Outside the limit. So I think that looks like it's right. So we get rid of that logging now and resubmit my answer. Oh. So I had to completely walk away from this problem. Um, because I was completely stuck. I, as far as I could see, my code was correct. 
Um, but I was getting the wrong answer. It was uh, the advent of code was saying that my value was too high. Um, so I walked away. Uh, you know, I had a night, a decent-ish night of sleep. Um, I kind of turn problems like this over in my head when I'm not able to sleep. Um, and I came back to it with a kind of fresh perspective and not so much to attack the code because the code to me looked generally okay. Um, I figured the best way to approach this was to write a test. Now these kind of problems are perfect for unit tests. So um, I ran kind of an npm init-f, which kind of just generates a um, package file for me. And I installed uh, ESM, which is a module that lets me do kind of imports of, of packages rather than require, just because that's how I work now. And I'm using Ava as well, um, just because it was easy to get running with. Um, I'm particularly partial to tap uh, as a test suite, but I installed Ava in this case. Um, and then to use ESM in my um, my package, I have a, um, a package key called Ava, which contains require ESM. Um, and I've written about this on my blog as well, if you want to look at how I test. Um, but now it means that if I run Ava-W or watch test files and uh, run my test. So this will be my test here. I would do import Ava from Ava and I can do test you know, Ava works T, uh, T pass, I think it is. Oh, called it Ava, didn't we? Okay, so Ava works. Um, now, if you have um, been watching my code closely, you might have already spotted where my mistake was. Maybe you were screaming at the screen, um, but I hadn't spotted it at all. Now, I have walked through this and, and worked out where the problem is, but this is how I approached it. So the first thing I want to do is actually look at each one of these field validators and individually uh, test each one. So I'm going to export just this this block here, um, and I'm going to put it into my project. So I'm going to import from dot dot slash four uh, b, and I'm going to get the field validators, um, and we're going to start with the birth year, and I'm going to take the rules as they appeared on the uh, website. So yeah, this rule. So I'm not making any mistakes in my code. Uh, the spec for the test is, you know, straight from the horse's mouth, as it were. So T dot is uh, field validator, B, Y, R, and the first test is uh, four digits. So we'll do three digits is false. Okay, cool. Okay, so uh, no digits is false. Um, and then if we do uh, two, uh, 19, 19, we should get false. Uh, if we do 19, 20, we should get true. Yeah, 1921, just to make sure that the values are good. Uh, 2002 is true. Okay, 2003 should be false. Ah, and here we have the failing test. So that should be true. And if we look at the code, uh, here we go, number validator between 1920 and 2002, uh, 2020, typo. That should have been the test. Um, oh, sorry, that should have been the validation. Uh, obviously, I got my noughts and twos the wrong way around, but now my tests pass. Um, and I'll probably go on to kind of validate this further. You know, some uh, letters. What did that do? Wait. Why is that failing? Eric is false. True. Oh, that's wrong. <laughs> uh, if, there we go, we've spotted a bug that we probably wouldn't have encountered. Is not a number year return false. There you go. Okay, so inadvertently caught another bug, potentially. Um, so I, I, I found this bug. I mean, I might submit the uh, 186 at this point since uh, we're still spitting it out down at the bottom. Or I might have hedged my bets and actually gone through each one of these um, and written the test for each one. Um, now, it turned out that actually this was the correct number. If uh, if look, uh, 186, yep. Um, 
so the bug was just me kind of incorrectly typing out the rules. Uh, but this is this is a these problems suit unit tests really perfectly. Um, it's really easy to kind of like just whittle out all of these different tests to make sure that exact you know the code is doing exactly what I expect. And if I was still getting um, uh, the incorrect number, I would then go on to test the full validate record and then um, you know see how that works and make sure I've got combination with this the CID thing um, because that's that's where I got caught out before as well. So. Hopefully that was useful. Um, like I said, you know, if we're we're working on a bigger project, then um, Ava is a really good test uh, test program uh, for testing. Tap is the one I usually norm uh, usually use just because it's generally lighter. Uh, but Ava kind of does a bit more for you. I've recently started looking at Cypress, which uh, was surprisingly easy. Uh, not a lot of configuration to get running uh, to do kind of full on uh, browser testing. Um, and what else did we look at in here? I think. You could have solved this with reg regular expressions, which I think would be a bit gnarly to get kind of uh, the full you know, range of years. I think it suits functional programming better. Um, uh, we've got some, you know, straight uh, array.includes, some actual regular expressions for kind of fairly standard simple stuff like uh, repeating values. Uh, important to remember the starts with and ends with, particularly around this. I think I saw some people who were struggling with this, or not struggle, uh, missed uh, these where this would match um, 10 characters. So if you didn't have the start and end, you could match uh, um, a PID that was 10 numbers, for instance. Um, and uh, yeah, then otherwise the rest is pretty much like what we had before. Uh, so yeah, thanks for watching. If you got this far, or maybe you just skipped to this bit. Uh, but yeah, testing, turns out it's pretty useful.